Hello, Legion. It's Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Frostpunk in what will be the last episode of our The Fall of Winter Home, or rather the Tragedy of Winter Home series in the Fall of Winter Home DLC. So if you have not seen my past couple of community posts, uh, don't spoil it now. If you're watching the beginning of this episode and you haven't seen me talking about what's been going on with the delays with this final episode, then I'll talk about it at the end. We're going to play through about 15 minutes, probably, of gameplay. I will tell you this much right now. I have done this twice already. And when we get to the end, I will explain more. But for now, I want to continue with the story. A couple of things I want to do as I start off the episode here. We are going to take all of the engineers out of the repair station because, well, frankly, they're not needed there anymore. And uh, we also have a few steam hubs. I'm going to take a look around really quickly and see what we can do to conserve coal for the last little bit here. And actually, you know what? I'm going to go all in. I'm going to do something I haven't even done in the previous two attempts at this. Uh, I'm going to dismantle this outpost... And I'm going to try, I mean, if it works, it works. I'm going to dismantle this outpost. I'm going to send this outpost team over to the food outpost. And we're not going to be producing as much coal as a result, which is why we're going to need to be very careful with the coal that we keep in the city. But right now, um, if, if we have, with the remaining two days and three hours, if we can have just a, a large shipment of food come in, even just once, uh, that could be uh, a good thing for us. Why is my mouse grounding we're grinding against the desk. Okay, made it stop. You know when something gets stuck under like one corner of your mouse, and like I I don't have a mouse pad under my desk. My desk is a is a good reflective surface for for a you know a laser mouse. So I don't I don't need anything. But like if something gets stuck underneath it, it'll, all of a sudden it'll start gr grinding under your mouse. Yeah, that just happened. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and we need to dismantle a bunch of stuff that is not being used anymore. Uh, and that includes like houses. Yeah, there's people. There's not people living in these houses, obviously, because they're they're out where it's there's just nothing going on. There's a cookhouse here. We can go ahead and break down this uh, fighting arena for the wood, and let's see what else we can get away with here. We have several engineers available, obviously. Uh, I don't need anyone working the cookhouse at the moment, but I need to free up those workers. I'm gonna have. Let's have three... You know what? No, let's have five engineers kick in there. No. no yeah. Okay, five. Five. Because the, the food outpost is going to bring in raw food, so we're going to need to stay on top of that. But um, let's have a look around. As I was saying a moment ago before I got distracted, we're going to take a look at the steam hubs in the city and see which ones can be broken down. Now, this one is currently... We don't have steam hub range upgraded, so that's not even helping that steelworks building. Let's see. I can go ahead and get those workers out and replace them with engineers. We do need to produce a lot of steel, so I'm okay with cranking that all the way up to 10. And then we have, of course, this steam coal thumper working here, and that's currently being dismantled. We have a charcoal kiln back here. I am going to go ahead and dismantle that. But um, steam hubs wise, let's stay focused on this for the third time. Okay, there's a lot of room in these houses if I were to leave this steam hub standing. Also, there's a lot of room in these. Ooh, hello. There's a ton of room in the houses here. Tell you what, here's what we're going to do. We're going to break these down. I know there's people living in them, but they'll move. The point is to break down as many of the steam hubs as I can to where they're not... Yeah, we don't actually have any... Patience at the moment, so I'm going to break down. Yeah, we're going to break down this care house, and as a result, we can go ahead and break down this steam hub as well. Now it looks like this one's still supporting a good number of people. That one's being broken down. We've already looked at that one. I mean, part of me is thinking I don't even need this one. I mean, this advanced steelworks is doing okay without any kind of heat. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to cut that off, and we're going to turn that. Hello, it's still showing as heated. How is that? Is there another steam hub nearby that's heating it? But I'm just not seeing. That's weird. Oh yeah. Let me fix this really quickly. How is that still showing is... I mean, I'm not going to complain. We need to keep this heater on, but if we can have this heater off, then that'll be great. Alright, so this agitator can stay in place. That agitator we can get rid of, and that'll free up some steel. This prison, I mean... The prison, I mean, we do have several prisoners here, but I kind of want to free them so that they can actually work. I 
I don't know. How is it supposed to work? They're, they're all getting out. I mean, part of me just kind of wants to keep these people here. But let's let's leave that as it is. And then we need to break down every house, pretty much, that doesn't have people living in it. A lot of stuff needs to get broken down. I'll tell you what. Let's leave that for now because we need, need to give people a chance to move around. But I've got some free workers, some free engineers... Let's free up these workers and replace these guys here. See, that just freed all the prisoners simply by doing that. <laughs> just by zeroing it out, I freed all the prisoners, so so much for that. That system doesn't work particularly well. We have these engineers working the Propaganda Center. Propaganda Center, if I delete it, will reduce hope pretty significantly. But I think I need to keep that there just to make sure we can make through the rest of the scenario. All right, let's let people go to town and, and dismantle some of these things. We need to try to send as much as we can with the final shipment. We have one shipment on the way, of course. They send a lot of steel, but we can break down a lot of these things that you just saw me getting ready to break down. And the result is that we will be able to send more supplies along with the things that get broken down as a result. Oh, also, let me also plug a few people into these hunter's hangers so that they can produce a little bit more food. Whether or not that will actually help, who knows. Supposedly we have more workers available. So let's go ahead and let this one have eight. As many rations as we can send along, we will send along. I'm going to break down that hothouse. It's not necessary anymore. Okay, now let's take a moment and we are going to continue along the same kind of trend. Any house that's not being lived in. I'll keep the fighting pits there for now. Aha. Here's a few more. We'll break those down. Break that one down. That one. That one. That one. That one. And that one. Okay. So that's pretty much it. And of course, no one's really available right now to work. We can sign a new law, but I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. Oh, agitators. That's another thing I could probably break down. Let's have a look at where these are. That one I'll leave there. Are these workshops? Do I have engineers still in workshops? I thought I broke down... Oh, yeah, that's right. That was in previous attempts at this episode. So one thing we can do as well, we don't need the workshops anymore, and that'll free up some engineers to do some of these jobs. See, that's the downside of having had to repeat this a couple of times. I'll talk at the end about why that is, is that there are things that I... Enter the episode thinking I've already done, and no, I have not already done them. All right, so that's some more engineers there, and let's go ahead and plug in, tell you what. I know it really doesn't matter distributing them between the, the different hunter's hangers. Something is satisfying about seeing more blimps go up. That's all it is to me. All right, we have 19 hours, roughly, just under 19 hours until we have to send off the final transport. Looks like the food transport is about to arrive. Still breaking down a bunch of stuff here as we begin. All right, about to get really cold. All right, now one thing that's going to happen, as I recall from the last go I had at this, is that we are actually going to hit our steel cap, and I want to try not to do that. So let's do a resource depot really quickly, and we can even build one close to the center of town so that they can get to it quickly. All right, build an outpost. Go. Indeed, we must. All right, now with that done, I'm going to give myself room for more steel, and we are going to keep breaking stuff down, and as you can see, we're producing a ton of it. Now, I can do a charcoal kiln which might be a good idea since I will need coal to keep the generator going for the last few seconds here. I don't know, there's an argument I don't even need that. I mean, the city is about to be abandoned, so maybe just leave it. We have this house, which is being... I mean, this fighting arena is not really that important anymore. There's a couple of them that, that aren't, really. Yeah, this one I can dismantle. I'll just give me some wood. Any 
any more agitators that I can break down. I don't see any. Yeah, I didn't build that many of them. All right, so I currently have six more engineers. What can they do? I mean, they can... We can do a prisoner roundup. But that'll lock people up and I'll actually lose workers. And I kind of don't want to do that. Right now I have 20 prisoners here. I could go ahead and assign them to the propaganda center. Will that increase hope, I guess? I don't know. It's, it's not very clear what having more workers in the propaganda center will do. Purpose-wise, there's not a lot I can do unless I do a pledge of loyalty or forcible, pers forcible persuasion. We're not going to cross that line. Um, <laughs> organic fertilizer. We're not, we don't have any hothouses going at the moment. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else law-wise I really need to do. So let's see what we're looking at here. We have 13 hours and only a few hours until the final transport arrives. All right, we're cooking lots and lots of food. All right, evacuation transport has reached the Dreadnought. We have one day and eight hours left. I kind of want to let things continue for a bit. One thing that's not clear, I've talked about this in, in the past attempts I've made at this, but um, obviously you haven't heard those. One thing that's not clear in the way that this whole scenario ends is what happens if you send a transport within the final 24 hours? It takes 24 hours to get to the Dreadnought. So if you launch a transport after those final 24 hours have started kicking down, then the generator explodes at the end of that time. If there's still a transport on the way, does that count towards your final victory or not? The game is not clear about it. So that's been kind of an issue as I've given this final episode a few shots. Now, it just to be, I'll go ahead and say this in case you're wondering, nothing has gone wrong gameplay-wise with this final episode. It's not anything like that that's been problematic. Yeah, we still are pretty close to the cap in terms of steel, which I don't like. But granted, we're not going to get that much more. And we're about to send a bunch off. We have six hours until I send some off. So we'll probably be okay. And at that point, there's no point in producing any more. So, as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and take... Well, these are engineers. Okay. Yeah, I'll go ahead and take them out of these jobs. Because I could work an emergency shift right now as a means of producing additional steel, but it, there's no way, just so you can see this, there's no way that we'll produce enough steel for the final... You know, let's have a look at this. We need to send, yeah, close to 2,000 more steel. There's no way we're making that much in a day, even if we do the emergency shift. So I'm not going to worry about that. We've pretty much hit our limit and done the best that we can. So if I take those engineers out and put them elsewhere question is, what can I do with them? We already have the propaganda center working. I'll go ahead and use that to give people hope. And I can maximize the prison, I guess, as one thing to do. But engineers, unfortunately, cannot work the hunter's hangers. So they're kind of just sitting ducks at the moment. Let's see. Six hours left until we need to send the final transport. It's really hoping for a food transport at some point, but not seeing it. And this is our last chance. So I guess sending that guy over there to the food, we should have done that sooner in the episode. We've talked about that a bit in the comments. I'm well aware. It's a different type of game. Okay, that's it. Uh, actually, a little bit short on time here. Let's see if this... Where is the evacuation center? Here you are. Okay, so we need to go ahead and send... Everyone that we can, these engineers, can go. And then I suppose what we'll do is go ahead and shut down the prison. People are not going to like that. And now there are homeless people, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> that is not something I'm going to worry about. And then that frees some people up. Now, I just freed a bunch of prisoners, but evidently I can't put the prisoners on the... That's really strange. I can't put the prisoners on the transport. Oddly enough. It's kind of frustrating. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these engineers out, which is going to reduce hope. 
make people plenty mad at me. But this is just making it where we are ready to go ahead and send our last load of people off to Winterhelm. Oh, and for whatever reason, I can't send any more. Why is that? Well, in that case, if that's the way it's going to be, I'd rather send workers and have some engineers left over so that people can still work these buildings. I don't know why. Oh, I know why, because we only have so many that we can send. That's right. We're at the limit. There's already uh, 464 people, so we can only send 36. That makes perfect sense. All right, so there's that, and we're going to send all the steel that we can. We don't need to send any more steam cores. Uh, Provisions-wise, we'll send all the food that we can. It's not going to make that much of a difference. But let's go ahead and send that as the final transport. Yes, we're out of steel. Who'd have thunk it? Now, I have some engineers remaining, which I can use to repopulate the prison and get people's discontent back down. The generator is failing. Sir, the engineers monitoring the generator have warned that its ultimate that its ultimate failure is imminent. The damage to its critical systems is so widespread that when we patch a pressure leak in one place, two spring up elsewhere. There's nothing more we can do. Hope will fall. I see. Alright, so not a whole lot to do at the moment. We have a couple more engineers that are available that I don't really have. I mean, I could have them. It's the middle of the night right now, so there's nowhere I can put them. We have one sick person, finally. About time. getting progressively colder. I bet you the folks over at the at New London are getting set up right about now. It'd be cool if you could look at the map and actually like see indications of that. There's no uh, there's no indication unfortunately, but that'd be kind of cool. All right, so there's about 12 hours left until the final transport arrives. How much time do we have? 10 hours, 17 minutes? All right, good. Transport's going to arrive before then. And that'll be the end. I've taken longer this episode with doing this than I have my previous attempts. Mark day is up. Return your tools. All right. Just a couple hours left. And this is the final... Yeah, people aren't going to like this very much. Go down to speed two, now to speed one. Evacuation transport has reached the Dreadnought. You cheated us, there's no space left on the Dreadnought. A crowd of people has gathered, some are angry, some resigned, all are in despair. Now that the Dreadnought is full, they refuse to work. Why should we work? It won't do us any good any anyway. Some want to leave Winter Home and try their luck in Frostland. Others plan to stay at the city, at in the city, <laughs> and face the end with dignity. Half the population will leave, hope will fall. Let them go. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to go ahead now. That obviously could be a game-ending situation if you were already in a bad spot in this uh, in this playthrough. But now what we're going to do, because we, we know what's going on. I mean, we've sent the last transport that we can. We have literally 12 minutes until the generator blows up. So we're going to tell the Dreadnought to launch, and this will effectively end the campaign. Once the expedition leaves, there's no going back. It will be the end of Winterhome. Are you sure you want to launch the, jet, the Dreadnought now? Yes, I am. We managed to evacuate. Now, when that bell initially played, when I first did this, I was like, oh god, did I fail? Watch. The fate of Winterhome, the Exodus. When the orders came, or when the orders to leave came, we gathered together. It seemed like almost all of the Winterhome was here. 
The writing in some of these blurbs just throws me off. We thought with grief and gratitude of those who were missing. With so many saved, it felt so much more painful to leave those few remaining souls behind. Though our hearts were heavy with the guilt of surviving at the expense of others, we rode the dreadnought into the white void, gathering what was left of our society and leaving our home behind. We did not look back. We knew the fate that awaited Winter Home. Now, we are 20 minutes and 30 seconds in to this episode. I'm about to wrap this up, but let me tell you what's been going on with this episode for the past couple of days. And um, I'll talk a little bit about what I want to do with Frostpunk content going forward. There is more to the ending, but the reason I'm stopping now to talk now is that my, the game might very well quit the desktop in a second. The very first time I attempted this recording a couple of days ago, when I clicked the end, the game just straight up quit the desktop. I was like, oh, well, that was annoying. So I, I had to move on and do some other stuff. And then yesterday, not uh, I've, actually, yes, yesterday for you guys, if you're watching this episode live, um, yesterday, it, uh, when I clicked the end, it actually did a proper Frostpunk style ending. Uh, when I tried to re-record it after I had finished recording, I went ahead and used this as my moment to end the episode in my second attempt. And <laughs> as soon as I was done recording, I clicked the end and it did a proper ending. And I was like, oh, well, that's what it didn't do the first time. And, um, I'm, I'm trying, I'm hoping for a third time's the charm moment here. So what I'm actually going to do, just to make sure I didn't waste my time, is in a second I'm going to do a little bit of a cut. I don't typically, I, I try to record straight through, but I'm going to do uh, an edited clip where I, I'm going to stop the recording just to make sure I've got what we recorded for this, and then I'm going to jump over and actually hit the end and have a new recording for that. And I'll stitch the two together if it actually works, but that way at least we don't lose this gameplay from this moment. But one thing I will say now before we watch the cinematic, I will go ahead and comment on the series in general. There will be an ending cinematic in a second. It's very similar to Frostpunk uh, in terms of the original story and the main storyline. Um, I'm a little bit thrown by this ending because we didn't do a very good job. We didn't produce enough uh, cabins. We, we didn't have enough space for the people uh, on the Dreadnought. And now it seems like it's kind of letting me get away with it. So the meaning of that mechanic, building up the cabins for the people who were on the Dreadnought, uh, doesn't, it doesn't seem to hold a lot of weight for the ending, which uh, is very frustrating for me. So when I'm looking at this ending from a just a, a storytelling standpoint, it feels a little bit rushed. It feels a little incomplete, uh, like some of the gameplay mechanics, again, that were... Uh, that we were using to kind of prepare for the evacuation didn't really play out according to how well or how poorly we met the conditions we needed to meet. So um, I'm open to discussion with you guys on what you would like to do for future Frostpunk content on the channel. I mean, I enjoy playing the game and definitely we will be messing around when they introduce the kind of sandbox mode where you can build a city and just kind of continue to play indefinitely, which is a lot of fun for me. Um, that's obviously my style of game to have on the channel, but you know, these story-based DLCs, if I feel like there's an element like this that doesn't really play out well, or isn't really fleshed out, especially when there's crashes involved and other issues like what I've described a moment ago, then, um, it just kind of leaves a sour taste on my mouth. And to tell you the truth, it kind of makes me feel like I enjoy Frostpunk a great deal. I think it has a lot of storytelling potential and I am looking forward again to the sandbox mode, but I don't know that I'll do that many more of the story-based DLCs for this reason, because, um, frankly, it's, it's just too, uh, too frustrating. I'd rather play a sandbox style game where the story is emergent, uh, than, you know, be building towards a conclusion to an actual story that then doesn't come to fruition in an orderly way because of crashes and all this other stuff. So, uh, let me know what your thoughts are on that. And, um, as far as the, the DLC in general, I enjoyed the story a great deal. Like I said, I just, I think I would have liked it more if I felt like the things that we were doing to protect people and save people carried more weight for how the kind of ending played out. But it seems like it said, well, nope, they got away. Congratulations, the end. And so um, who knows how that's, uh, how they'll change that in the future when it comes to Frostpunk DLC, etc. So I'm going to stop this recording here and I'm going to stitch you know, the ending video in, in a second to make sure that it uh, plays appropriately. This is very similar to what I had to do for The Great Order. Another reason that I kind of, you know, have soured a little bit on Frostpunk in the <laughs> in the past couple of days while I've been working on this episode. But um, as a game, when you're not recording for YouTube, it's fantastic, obviously. And it might even be the fact that I have the recording software going in the background that's, you know, somehow causing issues with Frostpunk's software. Who knows? But um, I'll stop this one here. And in the next one... 
well, obviously we're not doing any more in this series, but next for the 4 p.m. slot, I will probably bring back Surviving Mars for a bit, but I'm kind of I'm kind of thinking about some different options for what I might play, because there's obviously some popular 4 p.m. games. We have The Long Dark, we have uh, Stellaris that get played a lot in that time slot. Um, uh, both of those games have patches coming up that I'm kind of waiting for, but it might be a good thing to go ahead and build one, like go for one first. So I'll be thinking about that, and you guys can let me know in the comments what you would prefer to see. But for now, I'll stop this one here and we'll watch, we'll let the ending cinematic be the end of the series. I won't even commentate, we'll just watch the cinematic together. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes are coming out in, well, obviously in this series it's done, but new episodes in a science fiction survival and or simulation vibe are coming out every day at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think and I'll see you next video.